So, this hat is gonna be perfect for this video. And here's why. Struggle between an off-duty police officer in Chicago and a man who attacked her. Emily Ikeda has the story. A warning, some of what you're about to see and hear is disturbing. Tense moments caught on camera in Chicago as a man identified by police as LeVon Smith grabs an off-duty officer from behind. In the scuffle, she warns, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. before a shot rings out. Even then, the brawl continues. The surveillance footage released this week by Chicago's Civilian Office of Police Accountability. The video and audio from January's incident were not synced, so NBC News aligned them. The off-duty officer instructs onlookers to call 911 as she continues to yell at Smith. You thought I was playing? I told you I'll shoot you. Who was struck in the hand, abdomen, and hip, according to the police report. He later died in the hospital. I shot him. You did? Yeah, I'm a police officer. Off duty. Yeah. I don't know. He tried to steal my gun. Smith's estate is now suing the city of Chicago and the officer for $10 million, alleging the officer used excessive force. One of the, the more troubling things about, about this incident is after Mr. Smith is shot, uh, there's no first aid render. Uh, the officer appears to stand over Mr. Smith and taunt him. But that could be a difficult legal argument to make. This case will be even harder because there is video evidence showing Smith wrestling with the officer and continuing apparently to wrestle with her even after she fires shots. While initially placed on routine administrative duties, the officer's current status with the department is unclear. Now a month since the fatal shooting. Emily Ikeda, NBC News. The more you fuck around, the more you're gonna find out. What's good, YouTube? This your boy Trent Bennett representing Triple F TV. And you just seen the video of what just happened. So many of you may have seen this video uh, circulating on the internet, on the news within these past few weeks. And that's a heck of a situation to be in. And um, I applaud her for handling the business um, and keeping herself protected. Um, one of the things that we cover in our classes, and again, uh, I am a USCCA instructor along with my wife, so when we have our courses, we always, always talk about situational awareness. That's probably the most important part because if you can get out of a situation, we prefer you get out of there and you should use your firearm as a last resort. So in this situation, she didn't have a choice. She was already in the red zone. Uh, she was already in the fight. She had no other choice but to act. She issued a warning. He did you know, he wouldn't like, you know, move, get away from her. She took care of business. She had to do what she had to do to make sure that she was safe. Um, one thing we also cover is we tell people is, you know, in the event of a self-defense situation, you need to know what to do. Um, also, one of the things we also tell people is to get some insurance. So not only am I a USCCA instructor, but I'm also covered with my insurance through USCCA. And the reason why that is important, as you see in the video, she's pretty much probably going to get off. Um, criminally, but that family is going to sue her civilly for $10 million. So the USCCA covers us both ways. And that's a lot of things people don't think about. And that's why we tell people to come take our class because we're not just teaching you how to shoot um, and just teaching you, you know, just to have fun while you're at the range, but we're teaching you some of the legal aspects that comes with the stuff that you have. Now, I am not a lawyer at all, but I'm just telling you, so don't just take my, you know, word for gospel. But I'm just letting you know this is what we teach our students. Um, but what USCCA is, I have a lawyer pretty much on standby in the event that I have to use my firearm. Uh, about a month or two ago, I made a video. I said, I hope I never have to use my firearm. Never hope I have to use my firearm. But if I do, I kind of got an idea of what I need to do. And I know who I'm going to call in this event that it does if something goes down. So it seems like sometimes the laws are there to, you know, protect the criminal and that's unfortunate but now she's going to be sued but i don't think it's going to hold up in court because the video right there plays for itself you can they see the video they're going to have to throw this out in my in my honest opinion so you know what this is what happened to him he found out and that's what happens and it's sad that more people are not paying attention to these type things and getting the training that's necessary 
And I have family and friends right now. Some people live in some rough areas, it's probably some of the most dangerous places in the nation. And they still walking around here, not, you know, knowing what to do, not, you know, you know, taking firearms classes, it, just self-protection. Or, you know, they, you, you gotta be proactive in this stuff. If, if you don't have to have a firearm, you know, I wish we didn't have to be that way, but that's not the society we live in. So, you know, if you got a resource of somebody that's in your family that's teaching this stuff, why not use them to your, you know, advantage? So you have to take this stuff serious. Be proactive. You, nothing may ever happen, and that's great. But you also need to stay on top of your game because I'd rather have my firearm and not need it than to need it and not have it. That's the way I work. And now that I've gotten so heavy into this, I try to educate people on the aspects of this game and, you know, learn how to protect yourself. Because everything, when it comes down to it, you are your own first responder. You see what she did? She's her own first responder. That time you hear in the, in the video, she says, call the police after, you know, after the event is done. I don't know what time the police arrive. The point you should, I'm trying to make you to understand in this situation that the police are not going to always be right there. Usually, every time the police arrives to a situation, the event is done. It, it don't take that long to create something. Also, something as simple as that. I'm a, also a first responder, so I work for the fire department. One thing you have to consider is, for instance, like I said, response times. Response times, that depend on the area you live in. Me being in Huntsville, Alabama, I think we have a pretty good response time with, our, uh, with the, fire, the fire department will respond to medical emergencies. But sometimes... You know, one thing, let's say CPR, using CPR. You Sometimes you got to get those chest compressions going right away. Or you need to learn how to stop the bleed, stop the bleed. Stuff is that of that nature. Sometimes you may, EMS may be delayed. Now, we have a, a, a ambulance company that comes now with the city of Huntsville to go the way it is. Sometimes our response times for transporting is a lot longer because we can't get an ambulance there in time. So because the ambulance service doesn't only work for the city of Huntsville, they work in the whole county. So they could be, you know, running very rampant. They could be on one side of the county, then we have to wait for them to get to our side into the city uh, to help us out. So that's why we always tell people you need to be your own first responder and learn how to take care of yourself. So this whole scenario right here, again, this hat is perfect, perfect for what happened right there. And everybody, I'm telling you, get the training. Get the training um, to learn how to protect yourself. Um, you don't want to be caught out here. Now, just because you get this training, it doesn't guarantee a win. It doesn't always guarantee a win, but it gives you a fighting chance, and that's what matters the most. So, I just want to hit y'all with that video just to let you know my thoughts. This is what happened to him, and he found out. All right? So, hopefully, we bring out some this weekend. Again, this is Trent Bennett representing Triple L TV. Signing off. Peace.